To the little girl who feels lost and unseen, I see you. To the little girl who feels unheard and ignored, I hear you. To the little girl who feels lost, God has found you. To the little girl who feels hurt, God can and he will heal you. To the little girl who feels unloved and unworthy, God says you're worthy and you're enough. To the little girl who's been sexually abused, God said it wasn't your fault. To the little girl who feels betrayed, God says you have a friend in me. To the little girl who feels scared, God is with you. Queen, I'm here to tell you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and nothing that you went through has gone wasted. God is using it all. How do I know, you ask? Because that little girl was me. Expect love because you deserve love. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Heal Her Podcast. So it's nice of you guys to join me today. So today I want to get into the story of Joseph because I know life seems unfair and I know a lot of times when we go through situations, we can't see the good in everything um, because we always tend to look at the bad. Even when we go through our traumas and our struggles, we tend to see the worst in everything, but never seeing God's favor in our situation we never can see the promises of god in our situation and you really can't see it when you don't even know who god is and you don't know how graceful god is and the situation that you went through or are going through there's promise in your pain and you guys have to understand that and know that, yes, it may seem hard. It may seem messed up because it seems like you're, you know, it's like, why me, Lord? But then you got to ask yourself, why not me? So that is why we are going to take a look into Joseph today. And if you don't know the story, I'm going to give you a little of the backstory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paraphrase it a little. I am going to read. Um, a scripture here and there just to give you some context, but I'm going to paraphrase it because I want to help you guys understand the promise and the pain, and I want to make sure you guys get it. So before we even jump into this podcast, we can do nothing without God. We are nothing without God. So we have to give God all the glory and the praise. So, Lord, we just thank you right now in this moment, Father. We thank you for your word in this moment, Father God. Lord, You, we ask that you decrease us, Father God, and increase you, Father God. Allow your anointing and your spirit to just fall upon us and reign in this room, Father God. Allow your word to come to life, Father God, and allow the ears that are listening to hear, Father God, and just give you all the glory and all the praise, Father God. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We know that this word is already blessed. And so we just give it all to you, God, and just pray that someone is delivered from this word today. Lord, it is in your son Jesus' name we pray and we say, have your way. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, so again, like I said, I'm going to be paraphrasing um, a little bit, so just stick with me. I promise you I'm going somewhere. So Joseph in the Bible, his story is he had, um, I believe it was three brothers and Joseph was loved more by his father than any of his other brothers. So his brothers, when they learned that of him, they were jealous and Joseph, just being in his own world, he came to his brothers to express a dream to them and they already hated him. So they weren't, they weren't okay with his, um, his dream that he had, that 
And they, they're pretty much, because Joseph pretty much told them, like, in so many words, like, I'm going to reign over you. And they were looking at it like, reign over us. And just to give you some context, I am going to read that. Um, I am going to read that part of the scripture just so you guys can understand. In Genesis chapter 37, I'm just going to read verse 3 and 5. So it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in old his old age. And he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. Go on to five. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream I had. We were building sheaves of grain out in the sudden out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gather around mine and bow down to it. So as you can see, when Joseph told his brothers the dream, it just made them even more mad. So one day his brothers were out um, pretty much doing their job um, like they normally do. And their dad wanted Joseph to go check on his brothers um, and pretty much to bring them back home. So Joseph did just that. And as Joseph's brothers seen him coming, they pretty much was plotting against him and they wanted to kill him. But here's the favor of God just even starting out. So one of the brothers was pretty much like, no, don't kill him. Pretty much just make him suffer but he wanted the the brother that was trying to save joseph pretty much wanted to go back to get him he wanted to come back for him and so um that was just in the moment like god's grace like not even taking his life so the brothers agreed like okay we're not going to kill him um so moving forward they ended up the um so pretty much what the brothers were supposed to do was um, just hide Joseph. So pretty much um, they were supposed to just throw Joseph into the wilderness and um, not lay a hand on him. But the other two brothers pretty much like disagreed. They went against the plan. And what they ended up doing was they ended up selling Joseph to the Israelites and Here's where it gets into interesting. So when the brothers, because one of the brothers that was trying to save Joseph, when he came back for Joseph, Joseph wasn't there. So it was like a shock to him. And he pretty much, he pretty much felt like, you know, he let him down because when he came back for him, he wasn't there. So like I said, um, Joseph, brothers sold him to the Israelites. And when he sold them to the Israelites, that's when you start to see in the story how God was with Joseph and he had favor upon his life. And just like us, when we go through situations, we can't even see the merit that we have that God gives us in our storms, in our tribulations, in our trials. So again, we, we tend to look at everything as a negative. Um, but when you move forward into the story, here's another um, verse that I'm going to read you guys in Genesis 39. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. So Joseph is living with the master, but God had gave him favor. He allowed him to prosper in this situation. In doing so, Joseph pretty much, because he had favor with God and God allowed him to prosper, the master pretty much gave him reign over his whole house, everything. He pretty much had him take care of everything. He put him in charge of everything. And Joseph, you know, he did his job. He did what he's supposed to do. And he took care of um, 
all the master's stuff. And then the only thing that the master required was for Joseph not to touch his wife. He could touch anything in the house. He had reign over anything in the house, but he was not supposed to touch the master's wife, which he never did. But here come a trial and tribulation again. He already going through a storm. He already going through a trial. He's already going through something. But within that situation that he's going through, he has favor. But something else comes up where pretty much the wife wanted him to sleep with her. And Joseph wouldn't take the bait. He, every time he seen her or every time she asked him, he turned her down. Like, it was so bad. Like, he had to get away from her. And so the last time she tried to su seduce him and asked him to sleep with her, he pretty much ran from her because at this point, nobody was in the house. Like, nobody was around for, you know, to see anything. So he just took off and started running. But in the midst of him running, he left his cloak. And so when he did that, that gave her fuel to have evidence to say like, hey, look what Joseph did. He took advantage of me pretty much, but that wasn't the case. But she was so mad and she couldn't understand why he wouldn't sleep with her. So instead of her just taking it on the chin, like, all right, he not going to budge. She made up a lie and told her husband that he tried to sleep with her and he didn't. And she didn't even call him a servant. She didn't call him by his name. She called him a Hebrew slave. So she pretty much told the master, like, your Hebrew slave tried to sleep with me. So Joseph was in a position where he couldn't win. And, you know, just like us, when somebody tell us something, we tend to believe it. And that's what the husband did. He believed his wife, which I can understand. Like, okay, this is my wife. She telling me something. You know, I got to be at her defense. And so now I got to go take care of this. And so that's what the master went to do. He went to go try to take care of it. Um, but jo Joseph flee. Like he did the only thing he knew how to do, which was flee. So in the midst of him fleeing while well, attempting to flee, you know, they, he got caught. Like when they got Joseph, the master ended up putting him in prison. And so like never questioned him, never asked him like what happened, never got his side of the story, anything. He just... Pretty much like throw him in jail. But here goes God's favor again. And here goes God's grace again. So let me show you. So in Genesis, we're going to say 20. In Genesis 20, let me tell you what it said. Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis 39, 20. So it says, Joseph's master took him and put him in prison the place where the king prisoners were confined. Keep listening. But while Joseph was in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So, you ladies have to understand. You young women have to understand. No matter what it looks like, no matter what situation you're in, God is still going to grant you favor. God is still going to have you prosperous in whatever you do. You just got to keep your eyes on him. Yet again, yes, it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. But just look at the... When you start looking at the little things in your situation, that'll give you hope that something better is going to come. That is going to give you hope that something is going to change. Because the one thing I want you ladies to know is that you were designed to go through this. You were meant to go through this. Couldn't nobody else go through this but you. God thought you were strong enough to be able to handle what is being thrown at you right now. So count it all joy when you're in these situations, these trials and tribulations, 
because God thought you were special enough. Not thought, not even thought. He knew that you were special enough that you could handle this. He knew that you were strong enough that you could handle this. Because when you come out of this, you'll be able to tell that same situation. You'll be able to tell your testimony and to help and to free somebody who else may be going through that situation or something similar to that situation. Because we can't speak to people without going through something. Like you can't, that's just like, I'm a can't, no, I'm going to say that's like a preacher trying to tell a person how to fix a vehicle, the, the ins and outs of a vehicle. They can't tell that person nothing about no vehicle because they're not a mechanic. They don't know the ins and outs of that car. I mean, some may, but I'm just saying, using it for reference. That's a mechanic's job to tell them how their car is running what's going on with the car to get them the diagnostics of the car. So I want you ladies to be encouraged and know that whatever you're going through, it's not the final destination. It's just the beginning. I know when I was in my foster homes, looking back on it now, like the whole, like I'm not going to say the whole time. I'm going to just pinpoint to one situation that I was in. And my foster mom used to come wake me up in the morning. And she told me, she said, every time I come in here and wake you up, you're always smiling. And looking back on it now, thinking about that, I'm like, that wasn't nothing but God's grace and God's mercy. Because me taking away from my mom, not being around my family, and I'm sitting here smiling, like as a child. But as a child, you don't know no better. But as you get older... All that pain and hurt that you buried and went through, it, you know, it starts to seep out and through things that you do or relationships or jobs, whatever. So it's best that you go through the healing process now and deal with those emotions, deal with those feelings, deal with that hurt, deal with that trauma so that you can show up and be better, a, a better version of yourself. The same thing I had to do, but it just so happened that I did it a little too late. And that's why I want to be here for y'all to tell y'all that you can get through it. You will get through it. I've been through a lot and I'm still standing. I'm still in the fight. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm still in the fight. So keep fighting, stay in that ring. I know those I know those rounds keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. But as long as you're walking with God, you're going to stay in the fight. The rounds are going to keep coming. It's just how you handle the round when you're in the fight. Because even though you're in them rounds and you're in that fight, it's still going to be some goodness. You're still going to get some hits in that fight. So be encouraged, man. I just want to hug on you ladies and encourage you ladies and be there like somebody was, wasn't there for me. Like, just want to help you build because it helps when you have someone in your corner telling you it's going to be okay. It helps when you got somebody in the corner showing you the way, encouraging you and cheering you on. It helps to have that cheerleader because... When you don't, you seek validation out in the world for other things. And seeking validation leads to mistakes. It leads to regrets. And I'm here to tell you, I done made mistakes and regrets looking for validation. And if I could help somebody not go through it, if I can help at least one person not go through the things that I went through or certain things to... It would be worth it. This podcast would be worth it because I know in my heart that I helped somebody that I wish somebody would have helped me. But again, like I said, we go through things for other people. Our stories are not our own. Our testimonies are not our own. And all you ladies out there, you have a testimony. You've been through something. You have a testimony. And sooner or later, you're going to be willing to share your testimony with the world. 
So be encouraged, ladies. I love you. Fear, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I just want you to walk in it, stand in it, and don't let nobody tell you any different. Until next time, ladies, be blessed.